right, so good morning, everyone. This is Sarah Cortez, and just like you, I'm also a teacher, and same with you, I'm also a graduate of Philippine Normal University. So it is a great honor and a privilege um, to be here today. I've been invited to many webinars and talks. However, um, I told my husband that this is the most nakakakilig invite ever because, of course, um, this is my first time being invited here in um, PNE Talks. And um, since I'm a graduate of PNU, I've been waiting for a very long time um, to become part of, um, of your activities, such as uh, PNU Talks. Okay, so again, thank you so much, uh, PNU, for having me here today. And I hope you won't regret inviting me. Okay, so um, for today's discussion, I'd like to discuss disruptive innovations in education, particularly um, adventure as part of disruptive innovation. Okay, so allow me to share my screen. There you go. Okay, so because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many have suffered. Many of the school stakeholders have suffered. The kids or the students, the teachers, the school leaders, school administrators, and all the other school personnel, or school personnel rather. Now some children had transitioned from private schools to public school and homeschooling. Well, some parents, of course, have found themselves working and learning at home alongside with their kids. And many teachers either lost their jobs or experienced a reduced salary. Now, in light of this, I'd like to discuss some of the disruptive innovations in education. What is disruptive education? I mean, what is disruptive innovation? What are the benefits of disruptive innovations? And um, what are some of the particulars, um, characteristics of uh, disruptive innovations? As we deep dive, I'd also like to um, discuss how these innovations help, okay, as we move towards learning, recovering. Okay, moving forward, Online learners need access to more than just core content, course content, and effective teaching. Our learners also need a wide range of support services that help them engage better with their school and their teachers to succeed in their studies and, of course, to connect with each other, with their classmates, with their friends, and, of course, with their teachers. However, due to um, the following reasons presented on my deck, on my slide, providing learners with the best opportunities for success has become very difficult. There is a case wherein there is an ineffective or ineffective time management. There's also overwhelming Zoom classes, not receiving timely feedback from our teachers, and no clear instructions received. Now, these are some of the challenges that our learners have experienced while they are learning online because of the pandemic. Now, what is disruptive innovation or what is disruption in education? Now, disruptive innovations in education can come in many different forms. They can be a small change in our teaching strategies or in our teaching styles um, as a teacher. Um, it can also be systematic efforts for change of our school stakeholders, especially our school admins, school leaders, and school personnel. Or it can also be our students or a student's idea or students' ideas that were encouraged by our teachers. Now, um, as I've mentioned, ideas, these are new and fresh, innovative ideas coming from our students. Okay. Now, the impact of these innovations have been in the educational uh, field and can be brief, but also long-term and career-changing as well. Whether small or large, it is vital to continue to find ways 
to bring disruptive innovations to our educational system. So again, um, disruptive uh, innovation is a disruption, okay? Um, a disruption or a break or interruption in a normalized educational process. So before pre-pandemic, we've been doing running our classes inside the classroom. But because of the pandemic, we've transitioned um, from classroom to online schooling. If not online, others are modular or module-based um, schooling. Now, um, there are benefits, of course, of um, disruptive education. Of course, there are cons, and of course, there are also um, pros. Okay. Now, the benefits of utilizing disruptive innovation in education are that it has the ability, first, it has the ability to level the playing field for students who may not have the same access to educational opportunities as others. So in the area of e-learning, this innovation allows for adults, adult learners, to, um, to work full time while at the same time still work towards their current degree, their current course, while maintaining, of course, a healthy um, work and family balance. Now, another benefit is it creates development, professional growth and development. Now, further benefits to utilizing disruptive innovations in education are that it creates the needs for professional development. This makes the teacher and school leaders to be more effective educators and allows them for new ideas to emerge regarding ways to implement best practices in education. Another benefit of utilizing disruptive innovations in education is that it gives students choice and variety with their learning. It promotes um, power of choice, the power of choice for our students. Now, having multiple methods for students to learn leads to having multiple ways to assess our learners, depending on their multiple and varied learning styles and learning needs. Now, educational innovations are important to foster growth and sustainability in our educational system. And the last benefit is it provides innovative ideas. So providing new and fresh ideas and incorporating them in the teaching and learning process is not only a benefit of positive educational disruptors, but it is an instrument to create new opportunities for our students in their lives. Well, actually it also creates new opportunities for our teachers to earn more income or to have additional income, okay? Now, the same is true for school administrators, of course, as they find new ways to grow and develop their own skills and insights on how to effectively and successfully run their, their schools and their institutions. And to further emphasize these benefits, there are a variety of ways to incorporate disruptive innovations in the school and, of course, in the classroom. Now, as we deep dive on this um, disruptive innovations in education, there are lots of support services provided for our learners. Now, support services for learners are all of the measures taken to facilitate learning persistence and success while improving the quality of the learning experience through engagement and integration into the academic community. So from the perspective of um, different school stakeholders, learner support should have the following characteristics. Now we're going deep dive on disruptive innovations in education. Okay, first it should be an innovation should be purposeful, meaning it exists to support learners in their studies from first, of course, inquiry through graduation and beyond. It should be integrated into institutional mission and strategic objectives. 
So regardless whether um, we transferred from classroom to online learning, we should stick to, um, to the purpose, to the vision, and to the mission of the school or the institution wherein the kids or the students are currently affiliated. But well, not just the students and the kids, but also the teachers and the school stakeholders, or sorry, the school administrators. And then number two, um, an innovation should be transparent. So it should provide clear points of conduct and clear standards of service identified. As I have mentioned before, um, it is important for the parents to have the transparency regarding the performance of their kids. And therefore, as the school administrator, school leaders, it is um, our responsibility to provide our parents with clear, direct instructions or transparent um, records of their kids. So these records, of course, um, should include the performance of their kids while they are learning online in your um, institution. And then another um, quality or characteristic is um, it should be accessible, all right? So um, now that we are no longer in the classroom, I believe um, uh, educational support should be available on demand according to the needs of the learner 24 seven where possible, okay? If possible, so whenever, wherever we are, okay? This supports are provided by our teachers and school leaders. And then number four, it should be responsive. Um, it should be responsive to um, individual needs or um, individual or unique, unique needs of our students. Of course, it should also provide efficient turnaround, both for teachers and for students. And fifth, it should be, um, as you can see here, responsive and course, interactive. So um, when we say interactive, it should be encouraging. It should facilitate interaction among and between the students, among and between um, the classmates, and um, among and between teachers and students, of course. And it doesn't uh, just end there. It should also be interactive among and between student support staff and academic content developers or curriculum developers, of course. And then number six, um, one of the characteristics is it should be um, self-directed and developmental. So it should facilitate self-management okay, of processes and development of skills and attitudes necessary for independence and lifelong learning. Seventh, it should also be integrated. So it should demonstrate a high level of cross-functional uh, cross collaboration that results in services being experienced seamlessly as possible by our students and by our parents, okay? And then of course, this is very important, open to change. So yes, we are now in the process of innovating our learning, I mean, our teaching style, our strategies. Now, um, as we transition to innovating, innovation, um, it should also um, evolve continuously to accommodate new learners population, new educational developments, new educational requirements mandated by the government economic conditions, technological advances, and findings from research and evaluation, okay? So again, um, just to summarize, these are the characteristics of disruptive innovations in education. So again, it should be purposeful, it should be transparent to all, it should be accessible, it should be responsive, interactive, self-directed and developmental. Of course, it should also be integrated 
And of course, lastly, open to change. Okay? So in line with this, therefore, I'd like to introduce to you Adventure. Now, Adventure is an online learning platform that offers tutorial services for our kids from preschool up until grade 10. So our vision here in Adventure, of course, is to provide 21st century quality education to all our Filipino learners, while at the same time, increase the quality of life of our Filipino teachers. And in order for us to achieve this vision, what we do is we integrate technology into our teaching learning process. So later, I'll be uh, presenting you a sample video of how we run online sessions in Adventure. And then we also equip our parents with what they need to catalyze educational transformation. Um, as I have mentioned, one of the good qualities is transparency. Now in Adventure, what we do is we provide um, progress reporting to the parents. Where in the progress reporting, you can see the milestone achievement of the kid depending on his or her performance. And of course, lastly, um, Adventure was founded or Adventure was created because of this to provide additional income to hundreds, if not hundreds, thousands of our Filipino teachers. Those teachers who have lost their jobs and experienced reduced salary because of the pandemic. Now, what is Adventure? Adventure is powered by 917 Ventures which is the largest corporate venture builder here in our country. And we are also powered by Globe, which is the leading Philippine telecom provider. Adventure was also featured at Filipino Home-Based Moms, CNN, Manila International Book Fair, and FWB. So as I have mentioned a while ago, Adventure is like a hybrid of an online um, tutorial service and a homeschool provider because we target a holistic, um, we target the holistic development of the kids, not just intellectual aspect, but also social and emotional aspect integrated into one setup. And then other than that, we also provide comprehensive and personalized online activities for our students given by our teachers. Now, um, what we do, of course, um, is we connect our parents with our students, okay? We connect um, um, our parents and students with our teachers by um, providing quality, affordable, and personalized one-on-one -on -one online tutorial services for students from preschool to grade 10. And we mainly focus on um, the core subjects that are aligned with the DepEd Q-12 curriculum, specifically the MELC, which is the most essential learning competencies. So all of the instructional materials and learning resources in Adventure are all aligned with the DepEd Q-12 curriculum. And then next is, um, this is our system. It's very easy and convenient and very simple to use. You will just have to register, book, and attend the session. By numbers, Adventure now has uh, 372 teachers. We've helped um, 372 educators who are in need of additional income. Um, yeah, additional income for their families, 6,000. We have also completed, successfully completed 6,549 online tutorial sessions. And we have around 8,000 FE followers. So by numbers, Adventure now has partnerships with different private institutions, private schools, and of course, um, different ventures under 917. So we have their consult MD, Kirgo, HealthNow, and Gcash. So these are some of the innovations or disruptive innovations in different verticals. So Adventure for EdTech. We also have Consult the MD on Health Now for Health Tech and Here Go for e commerce. And we also have Cash, okay, for um, finance. So, yeah, these are the teachers of Adventure. So, if I may remember before, way back 2020, we were like less than 10 in the team. But as we grow and expand, 
we now have 372 teachers in our platform. Um, these uh, teachers are all um, um, teacher for preschool, teacher for elementary, high school, and we also have teachers for special education. There you go. You have teacher Jam, teacher Saul, and teacher Shannon. So a quarter of our teachers came from the National Teachers College. And we also have teachers from the Philippine Normal University. So we look forward to having more teachers from my alma mater, of course. And as I have mentioned a while ago, um, this is how we do um, teaching or online teaching in um, adventure. So of course, we incorporate technology into our teaching learning process. We utilize new and innovative ideas into teaching online. So this is an example video of how we do um, online teaching. So what's the initial sound? What's the first letter? D. The, and then the middle yes. one? O. Oh. O. Oh, and then the last one? C. C. G. O. G. Dog. Can you do that? G. O. G. Dog. Okay. Next one. Sure. It's a cat. Okay, can you help me? Next one. A. T. T. Can we do this? K. A. T. Cat. A. K. A. T. Cat. Okay. Next right. one. Do you know this? A. All right. So that's pretty much it about um, how we do online teaching and adventure. Now, what are the benefits of um, the teachers in adventure? Of course, adventure provides additional income to our teachers, flexible schedule and um, set up. Teachers have full control over their schedule. So like, for example, um, they have work at 8 to 5. They can lend their service in adventure 5 p.m. onwards. They do not, or there is no more need for extra overhead aside from a computer and, of course, a stable internet connection. And lastly, one of the benefits is we, we provide, we also provide internship program for our students, wherein we allow them to be exposed with different approaches in um, teaching online. Uh, we also allow them to showcase their unique teaching strategies or unique teaching styles depending on students' need. And then, of course, we provide great exposure to online education. Now, how do we vet our teachers? Of course, we carefully vet our teachers with these four easy steps or with these four steps. First is we screen the applicants. We carefully screen tutor applicants with diverse teaching experience across all learning areas. So um, the papers, CVs, they provided, um, they submitted to Adventure um, are carefully screened. And then next one is um, we conduct initial phone interview, like a five minute phone interview, wherein we thoroughly assess tutor applicants' pedagogical skills. And then right after that, we also um, conduct um, 10 minute live demo teaching wherein we allow our teachers to showcase um, their lesson planning skills, teaching style, and mastery of the lesson. And then of course, lastly is um, submission of the documents. So what we do here is we validate the teacher applicant's information through submission of pertinent requirements, such as ID and course certificates. So yeah, that's pretty much it about adventure. Now, adventure again is one of the disruptive innovations in education here in our country or here in the Philippines. All right, so again, thank you so much for listening. I hope I was able to, um, to share my knowledge and insights regarding disruptive innovations. And I hope that we can help a lot more 
we can reach out to more of our teachers okay in the field of education and again thank you so much philippine normal university for having me here today it's an honor and um, i'm very grateful um, for this opportunity i hope that um course i hope to have another session with you but this time i hope that it's going to be live um like face to face you know once we um transition to better normal i look forward to um to visiting um the university again so thank you so much pnu um thank you so much to all our listeners of course to our teachers to future educators um, do not lose hope, of course. Life can be hard, but you'll get stronger with all the challenges that you experience. And of course, you'll get more innovative as you experience these challenges. So thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. Bye!